Welcome to St. Joseph's Parish on this, the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to all fathers present for this Mass. Planted in the house of the Lord, we proclaim God's kindness day and night. The third Sunday, monthly second collection for St. Joseph will be taken up today for Dubuque Rescue Mission. Dubuque Rescue Mission is a community offering hospitality, spiritual hope, food, shelter, clothing, and job development to those in need. Our entrance hymn is number 415, All Are Welcome, number 415. Please stand. God's blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin our prayer, we ask for God's mercy and God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without your mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace that in following your commands we may please you by our deeds and our resolve through Christ our Lord. Amen. A 
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, to proclaim your kindness at dawn, and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good. Just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is if a man went to scatter seed on the land, and it would sleep and rise night and day. And through it all, the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. But of its own accord, the land yields fruit. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he welds the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and it puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches. I use mustard all the time. It's my favorite condiment. I hope it is yours, too. Mustard plants and mustard trees are found in various locations around the world. Some of the earliest known documentation for the use of mustard dates back to 300 BC. This stuff has been around a long time. Trees can grow up to 20 feet high. 20 feet wide. It can give and grow in arid and dry climates, even in clay and sandy soil. It can grow in hot and dry weather, wet and climate, as well as, as um, cold. Even if the tree is cut down at the trunk, it'll grow back even stronger than it was. You know, the mustard seed is only one to two millimeters. That's about one sixty-fourth of an inch. And then Jesus says, that's what the kingdom of God is, this little seed. You know, even during our pruning time, believers can overcome and come back stronger than ever before. The mustard seed is drought tolerant. So even if our faith is small, we too can tolerate the dry times in our lives. The difficult growing seasons of a Christian, even when we are planted in poor soil by poor example from our parents, we can still grow. If you have a problem with your faith, you're not alone. These followers of Jesus, the disciples, were with him three years and go through the Gospels. And how many times did Jesus say to them, ye of little faith, why do, you, why do you doubt? They had little faith because they doubted his divinity. We must see with eyes of faith. And if we can do that, we can do great things. Even those who are considered little seeds in our world have shown us over and over again that they were stronger than anyone else. 
you realize that one of the youngest canonized saints was an 11-year-old girl by the name of Maria Goretti? Do you know her story? Maybe some story you should tell your daughters about? When she was that age, 11, a handyman or a work, workman on the farm, 17 years old, attempted to rape her. And she refused, and he stabbed her 17 times. She died on the way to the hospital. And before she died, she said, I forgive him. That guy, because he was a minor, went to jail, but not life, not life in, imprisonment or death. He was there for 27 years. He was bitter and angry. And Maria's mother prayed that entire time that there would be some kind of conversion. This guy gets out of prison. She goes to meet him. She forgives him. He has a complete change of heart. He is converted. And along with the mother, he was present for the canonization of Maria Goretti. Or Guiana Beretta Mola, a 30-year-old doctor in Italy, just a plain old doctor in a sense, when she was pregnant with her fourth child, the doctors said because of some growth in her uterus that she should have a hysterectomy and an abortion. She knew that treatment for what she had would probably kill the baby. She decided not to have any treatment. She gave birth to that child knowing that she might die. She did die. The baby was born April the 21st, 1962, and she died a year later. Guiana was canonized at St. Peter's Square on May the 16th, 2004, with her husband and her four daughters present. You talk about simple, small, holy cow. But my favorite story has to do with Jose Luis Sanchez de Rio in the 1920s. This little boy, 14 years old, in Mexico where the government was trying to close down the Catholic Church and they shot priests and they shot sisters. And this little boy was kind of a, a go-between between those who were fighting and he was captured by the government and he was brutally tortured. He was asked to detest publicly his Catholic faith and he said, I will never give up my Catholic faith. And they killed him. Pope Francis canonized him last year in October. Faith the size of a mustard seed. We're all pretty mustard seedy, frankly. We're nobody, but can be somebody. But when you talk about eternity, there's no one that's nobody. A tiny seed will never stop growing, and when the kingdom of God comes to rule and power on earth, it will continue to grow forever and ever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is physical and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified with Pontius Pilate, who suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We raise our prayers and our petitions. We ask God to hear us. For our Holy Father, that his prayers for Christian unity and renewal be quickly fulfilled. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That fathers, both natural and spiritual, receive grace to love their families and flocks with self-sacrificing love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, that they continue to live their vocation of love as a communion of persons, reflecting the love in the Trinity, especially Clara Seareding and Nathan Capron, who were married yesterday. Let us pray to the Lord. That all fathers, through the example of St. Joseph, fully embrace their vocation and accept their privilege and responsibility of caring for their children as St. Joseph cared for Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this body of believers, that we always aspire to please God and to do his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been remembering this Mass who have died, Wilfred Schwager, Robert Hutchcroft, Sister Joanne Fisher, Oscar Palm, Carl Sadlek, and Clara Zimmer, that they may know the fulfillment of God's promise of eternal life and everlasting joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God the Father, hear our prayer. Hear us, God the Son, Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Mercy on your people. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 497. We walk by faith, number 497. Jesus, Lord. 
my brothers and sisters, that my gifts and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing our spiritual lives, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in mind and spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. To the of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer by the Holy Spirit and born of Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as we acclaim. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Almighty Father, you bless us through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation the hand you extend the sinners, the way by which your peace is offered us. When we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins, we brought you back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over for death. Now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands and giving the blessing, gave you thanks and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice of blessing. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet to graciously endow us with the very Spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, 
so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, the apostles, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our song for communion is number 356, Seed, Scattered, and Sown, number 356.
others who have given us our lives and our names, that we may show them respect and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For fathers who lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support them and console them, we pray to the Lord. For our fathers who have died, that God may bring them into the joy of his kingdom, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian dads. Let them be examples to their children and grandchildren, practicing their Catholic faith. And grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them with a spirit of respect. And grant this through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you guys. Just uh, make sure you two stay away from my mustard. <laughs> Let's pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring unity to our church and our families through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. A reminder that next Sunday the 8 a.m. Mass will be here at St. Joseph's and the 1015 Mass will be at Springbrook. Our closing hymn is number 421, For the Fruit of Creation, number 421. Just to